Okay, welcome to this basics tutorial on um, reading and writing files in PHP, obviously. Um, the way this is uh, done is, well, the way we're going to do it is using the file put contents and the file get contents functions. Um, it's probably quite a short video, there's not too much to go into. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I've got this test.php file open here, uh, and this is the one that you see here in its own empty folder. Um, I've also got it open um, in my editor, obviously. At the moment it's just a blank file, it does absolutely nothing. Okay, so, say we wanted to create a sort of text file containing some data. Um, the way we would do that is using the file oops, put contents function. This function takes two parameters, the first being the file name you want to write to, so I'm just going to say example.txt, and then the second is the string you want to write. So I'm just going to say let's something like um, this is in the file there. Okay, so if I reload our page now uh, and then go back to our folder and hit refresh, you see we've created this example.txt, example text file. If I uh, open this up, you see we have this is in the file, in this file. PHP created this file for us um, and wrote this string to it. Should point out that this will overwrite. Um, any existing files. So say if I did um, this is also in whoops also in the file and refresh our page again um, and then reload our no just go back to our editor so it tells me the file's been edited and you see now this has been replaced with this is also in the file so you might want to be careful um, when using this function that the parameters you pass to it wouldn't allow for like someone to overwrite some of your system files. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much that. Um, one other thing I probably should mention is that you can also append to a file. Like this is just writing this to this file. Um, you can also like append this to the end of this file, so it will keep the contents that's currently. Uh, it will keep the stuff that's currently in the file and just add this to the end of it and you do that by specifying the optional third parameter with um, you give it the file append wait yeah append constant like so and if I just add a new line there and change this back to that and reload our page and then go back to our editor hit reload you see okay well you see this has been added and there's also a new line following it so if I reload a few more times and then go back to our editor, hit reload, you see we get this is in the file on lots of lines. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for writing. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything else to say on that, so that's pretty much it. The sort of disadvantage of this over the sort of PHP4 method, which I might mention, uh, seeing depending on how much time we get. Um, is that you have to have this whole string in memory, whereas with PHP 4 you could write it with like multiple f write calls. I mean, I suppose you could append it with lots of calls to this, but that'd be quite wasteful. Anyway, uh, let's move on to getting the contents of a file. So, um, this is very similar in a way. So, let's just delete this line and then we'll define this text variable as file get contents. And the file we're getting the contents of is example.txt. Right, and then if we just do echo text, just to demonstrate, if I reload this page now, you see we get the contents of that text file. If I just view the page source, bring this down here, um, you see this is what basically what was in the file. Um, it's output with the new lines intact. It's just not displayed here because we're, well, browsers collapse white space onto a single space. Okay, so that's pretty much that. Um, there's not really much more to say about this. The file get contents function just literally gets the contents of a file and stores it, well, returns it as a string. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Fairly simple, straightforward. I um, suppose for another example we could do replacing that with the file constant, which should just output the contents of the current script. Uh, which it has, except Firefox hides that. Yep, there you go. If I view the page source, you see we get the current um, PHP code. For some reason, they act like comments. 
um, to Firefox. No other browser seems to do that. It's quite strange. Um, well, I guess it's not really. I guess they've assumed that if PHP code is being displayed directly on the page, it's some kind of error. Anyway, um, or maybe it's a bug. It's got a distinct colour in here. It's not a comment colour. Come, they come out grey. Anyway, sidetrack there. Anyway, yeah, you see, you can just output the contents of any file directly using the file get contents. Um, obviously, for this example, you wouldn't really want to do that. You could do something a bit nicer, like um, highlight file. You could uh, highlight file. I reload this. You see, we get a sort of nice syntax highlighted PHP code. So there's a sort of sidetrack example. And this is the code that it produces, obviously invalid HTML at the moment because we don't have a doc type, but it produces like a code tag and then various colors. So, yeah, that's something else you might find useful, but not really relevant. I suppose it is sort of reading a file, anyway. Um, the other method of reading a file I wanted to actually mention was the file function. What, that fi what the file function does is return all of the lines in a file as an array. So you wouldn't have to like say if you wanted to say if you were storing in a um, like a list of IP addresses that were banned or something like a ban list in a file like one on each line, then to get those IPs you'd have to do something like IPs equals explode slash n for new line file get contents except we'd spell it right and let's just do example dot txt. And if we did a print underscore r ips, remember print underscore r just outputs an array in sort of human readable format. So I'll reload this now via the page source. Uh, you see, we get an array with um, what do we get? We get an array with one element as a line of the file. So if you remember, where's my editor gone? Here. If you remember our text file, so this is like element one, element two, element three. So back here we have this obviously element one, first line, two and three and so on and so on. I failed to highlight stuff there, but hopefully you understood what I was trying to say. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much everything about the file function, which I haven't actually mentioned yet. So that's how the file function works. Um, but instead of using this code, you can uh, sort of replace the whole thing with file example. TXT, like so. And if we reload our page now, so we get the same output, although without the ending one, because it's just sort of how it works. Um, if you view our page source, you see we get a slightly different output um, because the file function includes the trailing new line as part of the line, um, which is technically true, except that before we split it by that new line, so it was ignored. Well, effectively ignored. Um, this is most likely something that you don't want. Um, luckily, the file function has a option that you can specify for to stop this happening, um, and you do that by specifying the constant to the optional second parameter, which is sort of the mode, which is um, file ignore new lines. If we reload our page now, and just view the page source because that doesn't make any difference. You see, we get um, the new lines basically missing. So now we just get literally each line of the file as an element in the array, starting from zero and going up to, well, one minus how many lines there are. Not one minus, um, how many lines there are minus one. Um, so I think that's pretty much everything about reading and writing, well, writing and reading files. Um, obviously, it's just probably just mention efficiency. Say if you had like a huge text file, like really big, like gigabytes, then you would need um, as much memory available as you as like as the file size. So if you say if you had like a gigabyte file, um, gigabyte sized file, when you load it with file get contents in PHP, your PHP script would consume one gigabyte of memory, which well depends on the script and the use of the script, but it would most likely be something you'd want to avoid, and in some cases it can. Um, you can process the file one line at a time. Um, without actually reading it all in in, in one go, which would be a lot quicker. Um, I suppose I could mention that briefly. No, let's le let's leave that out because 
you want to stick with PHP 5 modern things. Um, if you do come across that, just look on php.net um, at the fopen, fclose, fread functions. Okay, so um, I'm going to end the video here, and hopefully this has been of some use. Um, you can probably see that. Oh, I suppose I should also mention one other thing. If we just go back to our example, um, the file put content example. So I go back to file put pile put file put contents example dot dot txt and the second parameter is a string. Obviously, this is just like any string in PHP, so you can include variables, you can include um, like constants and stuff joined together. Um, like say if I had, well it could just be a variable, you could just pass a variable here to this, like find text up here as I am a string, reload our page, and then go back to our text file, reload it from disk, you see it's basically the same, it writes to the file. Um, you can also, you could also have this um, whoops, so you could write something to the file defined by a variable and then just stick a new line after it um, and that would make a bit more sense if you were using the append mode like so. So now we should get let's do loads, there you go, lots of refreshes now we should get um, lots of lines like that Okay, so that now is the end of this video, and hopefully uh, you found some of this useful, and thank you for watching, as always.